Good evening, advocates for our children. Um, this is Candace Lucas giving you an update on our advocacy efforts once again um, in Chesterfield, Henrico, and throughout Virginia. This week uh, and last week, it's just been a whirlwind uh, of advocacy efforts uh, to get out there and to have our voices heard on behalf of our children who often uh, are not heard and are forgotten. Uh, we had the opportunity to attend the Civil Rights Coalition uh, on Police Reform in D.C. Um, at uh, Washington University of Washington, D.C. School of Law. Uh, had a great opportunity to speak before um, the audience there regarding um, the school to prison pipeline and how we need to really focus to shut that down. Had the opportunity uh, to meet and collaborate with great legal minds like Benjamin Crump, Attorney Benjamin Crump, who is um, who rose to um, rose to stature uh, when he defended uh, Trayvon. Mar I'm sorry, uh, represented Trayvon Martin's family. Uh, he at the, at that time uh, last week when we met, he was uh, in in the process of representing uh, the group of African American women who were raped and brutalized uh, repeatedly by the police officer uh, in Oklahoma that was later found guilty for uh, his actions. Um, we're excited uh, that contact, you know, uh, Attorney Crump listened to our story and uh, gave us uh, contact information to follow up with him, which I have done, um, and we're very excited to have him um, just show interest and looking forward to him coming to Virginia to uh, do what needs to be done in the federal courts for those of us that need a voice in the federal courts. Um, we also had the opportunity to go and speak before the Governor's Council on Childhood Success. We brought up the issue of post-traumatic slave syndrome uh, as uh, described by Dr. J DeJoy uh, Leary. Um, she shared the impact of institutionalized racism as a means of uh, trauma traumatizing children and how our children of color and adults of color suffer from that impact of generational uh, racism within our public schools and within systems in general, of course the courts, uh, government in general. So we had an opportunity to share that information as well. Um, on January 20th, just so you're aware, on January 20th in Chesterfield, Chesterfield's Circuit Court, uh, the appeal to the guilty verdict regarding uh, the trespassing case that I was involved in in Chesterfield County Public Schools will be heard at 9 a.m. Once again, that's January 20th at 9 a.m. Chesterfield Circuit Court in, uh, will be heard before Judge Haller regarding um, the reason that an advocate can be banned based on falsified claims of a school district that wants to continue to violate the civil rights of our black children and our children with, with special needs. Uh, we're not going to stop until we get justice and we're going to continue to bring attention to the issue. There's a reason there's federal law and there's a reason that federal law trumps uh, state law and trumps as well um, school district law. If it was up to Chesterfield County, public school leaders, segregation would still be alive and well, which it is to some extent, but legalized segregation would still be alive and well. However, when we have federal laws in place aimed at protecting individuals uh, against uh, unfair uh, or discriminatory and retaliatory, as well as malicious actions and uh, protocols at the state and local level, that's where we need to be and that's where we're going to be. We're taking this all the way to the top and we're excited about that to get justice. In addition, just wanted to share that we're also uh, planning for our January 18th lobby day at the Virginia General Assembly building downtown. 
Um, if you uh, go ahead and like us on Facebook, Advocates for Equity in Schools, Advocates for Equity in Schools, go ahead and like us and you'll get more information on how you can participate. Um, we're really raising the standard regarding advocating uh, at, in, at, in Virginia. Uh, Virginia has been uh, allowed to overlook and mistreat uh, people of color as a matter of practice. And the goal is to go ahead and confront that. And this is the season. We have advocates that are joining forces, the Tea Party, the Nation of Islam. I had the opportunity to speak at a panel uh, for the Nation of Islam's Justice or Else last night, and they're joining in our, our fight uh, regarding our children. We have individuals from the gay and lesbian communities, LGBT communities, and they're joining in. We have the opportunity, I had the opportunity to speak at one of their panels. And, and the fundamental reality is that all of us that are, are, that are perceived as being other are under attack, full-fledged attack. And so as a result, our rights are being compromised. And we just need to stand up as a unit across the common ground of civil and human rights being violated. Once we stand up, the system doesn't have a chance. Once we stand up in a united force, all my brothers and sisters, we're go whether you're white, black, Hispanic, it doesn't matter, gay, straight, it doesn't matter, Protestant, Christian, uh, Jewish, it, Muslim, Nation of Islam, it doesn't matter. It's time for all of us to unite. In fact, that is what Dr. Martin Luther King was really striving toward, uniting the masses to make sure that there's accountability and responsibility at the highest levels. We are really going forward. 2016 is going to be exciting. It is going to be the year of the advocate. It is going to be the year of the revolution. We are partnering with Black Lives Matter. We're going to be strategically engaging in some intense direct action uh, campaigns at the school level, specifically in Chesterfield and Henrico in Richmond City. We're going to be uh, just standing up for our rights and exercising our rights. And we're willing to go where we need to go and do what we need to do to get justice for those of us that need it, especially our children. So I want to give a shout out to all the parents out there who are struggling, who are trying to get the educational services that our children, their children need. You are not alone. Join us. Come and join us no matter where you are. We are they're going to be there to support you. So once again, the, this revolution is going to be not only televised, but it's going to global, go global. And so we're going to make sure that everyone is supporting each other. You are not alone. And once we come together, the systems that are undermining us, cannot stand. Uh, as one final note, I also had the opportunity to speak before Henrico County Public Schools last week as 15 of my white brothers and sisters from Harry Bird Middle School spoke before the board stating that we want the name changed because of what Harry Bird represented. As many of us know, uh, Senator Harry Bird was the architect of the massive resistance movement where the uh, local and state uh, entities decided that they were not going to comply with federal law, similar, similar to what's going on in Chesterfield County right now. The local and the state entities decided they decide that they're not going to comply with federal law. And as a result, uh, black children were not allowed to come to school and miss massive amounts of educational and instructional time. Uh, my black, my white brothers and sisters, they, they, it was 15 of them that just came back to back and just, you know, spoke out about the, the uh, injustice and the embarrassment of having uh, a school named after Senator Harry Byrd. And I, mm -hmm. while I praise them for their actions, I also had to speak and come forward and share that the Harry Byrd mentality the massive resistance mentality, the Jim Crow mentality is alive and well in Henrico County as well as Chesterfield County. Um, don't be fooled. There are parents out there of color on the east ends, on the ends that are other. <laughs> there are parents out there that care about our children. We wish to be engaged. We wish to come into the schools, but we're blocked 
by administrators. Uh, we're, we're targeted by superintendents like Superintendent Kinlaw and their school board and their attorneys. We're targeted by individuals in Chesterfield County like Dr. Newsom, his school board, Mike Asip, the director of special education there. They abuse their power. They misuse taxpayers' funds to use, use the money to abuse us. And so it's time to hold them accountable, not only in a civil manner, but in a criminal manner. Once again, we are calling on Dr. Uh, Stephen Staples of the Virginia Department of Education to exercise his authority under the Virginia Code, which specifically allows him to revoke the professional licenses of any educators that are licensed by the Virginia Department of Education that pose a threat to the welfare of children. And we understand that individuals, superintendents, and directors of special education, and educators that violate the civil rights of our children, push them out of school. We understand that they are not an asset to our profession. They are not an asset to our children. They are not an asset to our future. So we definitely need Dr. Staples to step up and exercise the uh, the the requirements and the and the uh, supervision to choose our children over the institution and to choose our children's welfare over his own welfare. We're also call also calling on. Uh, other individuals within the Virginia Department of Education and the governor's office, specifically the governor, we're calling on you to take a stand and address the issue, establish a task force to address the rampant civil rights violations that are going on in Virginia schools as it relates to race, as it relates to sex, as it relates to all types of other, other types, other mentalities. Uh, Virginia has been ranked uh, number four in the nation as one of the worst places for African Americans to live. And it is because of the environment being so hostile to individuals of color, uh, implicit as well as explicit bias are rampant. And so we need our elected officials, especially our elected officials of color, to step up. We're calling on individuals like Senator Donna McKeach and Lamont, uh, Delegate Lamont Bagby. We're calling on Delegate uh, Dolores McQuinn. We're calling on uh, Senator, uh, Senator uh, Dance. We're calling on all of you. Uh, we're calling on Congressman Bobby Scott. We're calling on you to take care of Virginia and to take a stand, and the Black Caucus as a whole needs to take a stand. We're demanding that some action be taken at the legislative level to ensure that our children of color are protected. Right now, it is a very hostile environment for children of color and children with special needs in Virginia. It should not be that way. We should make sure that the most vulnerable of us, among us, are protected and that once you advocate for them, you should not become a target. That sounds really Harry Birdish to me. That sounds really massive resistance-ish to me. That sounds Jim Crow-ish to me. And that's what's going on in Virginia. So now, we're, since all of us are uniting, the Nation of Islam, I'm, I'm excited to be part of their coalition. Um, and we're looking forward to them coming January 20th to the uh, circuit court in Chesterfield. We're looking at all types of organizations that are just joining, joining forces to do what we need to do to protect our children, to protect our liberties, and, and just to find common ground so that everyone is treated with respect and dignity in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So I thank you for your time and keep on with the keeping on of this struggle.